What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. If you're wondering why these stock wheels are on the car, I cracked a front recently. Um, I actually have a new one and I need to get it mounted. But that's not why we're here today. I got an awesome mod for the M4. Now, if you have the best transmission choice for a F8X, which is the DCT, if you guys think otherwise, you're slow. No, really, uh, the DCT is absolutely amazing and it's really better than the manual because this car needs that really, really quick shifting with that quick torque brand down low. You're just doing yourself a disfavor with the manual. So, sorry about that, guys. We got probably one of the coolest steering wheels that you can have on this car, which is the in-performance style. Now, this is the one that lights up, has all the shift lights, it's all Cantara, has the stitching and all that with a uh, carbon fiber little piece of trim here as well. This steering wheel is absolutely sick. I love it. However, there's one thing lacking on these. That's these paddles. They are not amazing. Uh, some people put aftermarket ones to just kind of cover them up. They'll put some carbon fiber ones. Honestly, they look so China. It's not even funny. They are rice, rice, baby. I'm not about that life. Um, so I've left mine stock. The feel is pretty dang good. They're aluminum and all that. And I, did, I like I'm saying, I cannot stand those aftermarket huge ones. However, there is an amazing upgrade. So I got these, the Mad Trace JQ shifters. Let's, oof, let's peep these. So not only do these shifters come with larger paddles, which they do have, I think I'm actually gonna run the smaller ones. I don't love the look of the big ones, but ooh, that, that is where it's at. Satisfying, so satisfying, the shifts. Magnetic paddle shifter. They actually come with two styles. So we got this style here as well. I think I'm gonna switch out to uh, this style and it's pretty easy. We can do that even afterwards. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I put the big ones on? <sighs> Let, let, let me put them up there. Big ones kind of be like that. Uh, I, I don't love it. I don't love the uh, the big ones. Now, some of you guys might like those big shifters like that, but honestly, I have been perfectly fine with these little ones. So I'm gonna swap these out and go with those other ones that they have. I think they call them the GT style. And we can see in here, it came with some different screws. Uh, it also came with an Allen wrench, which is absolutely great. Maybe those are, oh yeah, those ones are gonna be for here for the, uh, the actual back of the paddles. And it's just, a, it should be a really simple connection. I don't even think I'm gonna actually have to remove my steering wheel. So we're just gonna remove the airbag and I should be able to do that pretty easily. So something that I'm noticing here as well, uh, you can actually kind of loosen these Allens up. And what's really cool is you can give it a little bit of adjustment down, up, left, right, up, down. So you can get a little bit of play in there. For now, I'm just gonna keep them nice and tight uh, to, the piece, and I think what I'm gonna end up doing is let's go ahead and install a smaller one, and I'll go in ahead and install kind of the more aggressive uh, looking one on the downshift side. And yeah, I'll kind of just get an idea of what I like. I'll drive around with it, see which one I like more, plus you guys can get an aesthetic and kind of see at the end of it, the video of what you guys like. I can't even tell you how satisfying this this is, let alone driving the car. So I'm gonna be shifting everywhere for no reason. Uh, I always manual shift this car. I should note that. I always drive it in full shift intensity, full traction control off, sport plus mode, comfort suspension, doesn't matter because I'm on MCS two-way non-remotes, but that's how I used to rock it. And then the steering is on comfort as well, but. Oh my goodness. Easiest way to get to these paddles right here is gonna be removing the airbag. However, the car's battery is still on. So, I'm gonna go to the trunk, disconnect the battery, then we'll pop up here. Oh, did I mention I got slicks in the trunk? That's always fun. Uh, I blew one off as well at uh, Button Willow, D-Lambda tire. So that was uh, fun stuff. I still gotta go over to the tire shop and uh, get these fixed up, get my other slicks mounted up. But we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the negative battery post over here. It is right there and it should just be a tin. Also on a side note, did you guys realize that these cars have lithium ion batteries stock in the F8X to save weight? Yeah, and that's like a $1,300 battery from BMW. So another fun fact. So you can wait a while, 
after disconnecting the battery, let the capacitance inside anything on that BMW uh, drain off before messing with the steering wheel. And then we can go ahead and remove the steering wheel. We're gonna need, I think, just a uh, Phillips screwdriver. And it's actually pretty easy to take out. On the back side of the steering wheel, down here, there are these little holes, right? They're right on the side. And they are made to stick a screwdriver in and literally push down on. And when you do that, it's gonna release the actual airbag. So you can see kind of the airbag move when I do that. And that releases the clips. So once you get one side off, you'll kind of notice the airbag kind of pop up a little bit. Let's kind of feel this pop up. There it goes. Okay. Now from behind here, there's actually a quick connector. That's probably the easiest way. You just press on that. Boom. Airbag's out. Put that in your passenger seat. We're good to go. We're on to the steering wheel now. It is Torx time. You can see we got a Torx screw right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. E20 Torx. I'm just removing this and you can see that thing is already falling off. Look at that. It's now hanging. These are threaded coarse as well. So keep that in mind. Do not reuse these screws. As soon as you start loosening up these screws, literally the paddles just come right off. So this is a very simple installation. Hopefully don't do what I did and lose it down there, but I'm gonna grab that real quick. Okay, so now we need to disconnect the electronics. Now, unfortunately, these are tucked in there pretty far and pretty far down. And when you do the steering wheel, you do need to make sure to tuck these wires all back in the appropriate spots. Uh, that way nothing gets hung up when you slam the airbag back in. So we're gonna take off these two T20s right here. There's one more on the back underneath right here. And then we just kind of pull this, well, carbon on my piece, but you know, it might be a matte plastic on yours. We'll pull that apart so we can get in there and get to those wiring connections. Shorter than all the rest and it's black. So the last little thing is pulling this piece off. It should pretty much just separate yeah, it kind of just clicks in there at the bottom. But that's my little carbon trim piece. Yours might not be like that, but it's basically the same. So I literally just disconnected this from right there. It, the wire pulls out of the back side like this. And now that paddle shifter is off. Listen, not even close. And that's the look. Like, come on, freaking sick. But, as you can see here, it's a pretty similar size to the uh, OE. So that's why I think I'm gonna rock these. I always like these ones. Um, but I'm gonna try this one, like I said, on the downshift. Comparison-wise, this is how much larger it is. Like, look at that. It is quite a bit larger with that other carbon one there, so. I don't know, we'll see what we uh, end up liking. Pretty straightforward, we just go ahead and insert this to the back side here, and we plug it into the blue connector. And that is a uh, wiring connection, it's pretty simple. So after that, I just kind of slide it into its slot that it came out of, and then we wanna go ahead and tuck these wires back down in what they were tucked in. So you can see this wire right here, this one goes right in this little area right here for when it clips back on. Get this routing right, because if you get it wrong, the airbag's not gonna go back in. I'm gonna go ahead and put the screw in it. The new screws are provided in the bag and they're an Allen. Do not reuse the old ones. You will strip out these new mag shifters. Now this screw is a 2.5 Allen, so go ahead and grab that and position that shifter on the backside and tighten it up. Again, one last comparison. Uh, I just reinstalled this one real quick. Freaking sick. So same thing on this side, we're just gonna kind of pull out these wires, make sure you remember where they go. Don't get that messed up, but what I'm noticing is if you just put a pry tool, like a pick, right on top of this little black connector right here, it wraps around it, okay? And then just pull, just kind of straight up. Cause it's in this little, it's in this little slot. Ooh, there we go. And now, it's literally as easy as a one-handed install. I could do this whole thing one-handed, but I'm gonna put this back down, but you can see like, it is not a difficult install. Do not pay someone to do this. Do it yourself. 
Grab a couple tools, pay five bucks, invest $20 into some tools so you can do it yourself. It's a little Bimmer Tech kit. Like, it's literally all I'm using in a 2.5 Allen. Come on, guys. Get an Allen wrench if you don't have an Allen wrench. So probably the hardest part is just slotting this back in. There's a little slot on that blue thing. You'll see if you pull it out directly smooth and straight, you're gonna be able to get it back in there, no problem. And then all you gotta do is just re-tuck your wires here. Make sure everything's nice and tucked in. When you reinstall your airbag, that all looks good right here. So you want all this stuff nice and flat. You are gonna wanna check your horn once you finish this. And uh, yeah, just make sure all your stuff looks good. We're gonna put this back on. Go ahead and put this back on. It's just gonna slide over, go into its place, give it a whack. All right, went ahead and tightened down these two screws that tighten up this little trim ring. Last little screw right here, we'll tighten that up, plug in our airbag. We're just gonna use that little black tab, plug into that spot, and ahead, click the airbag back in. Good to go now, let's go ahead and plug back in the battery. You made sure everything was cool here. You may get a slight arc off that uh, when you hook it up. That's all normal. Perfect, it is ripperino time. streets guys we don't do that we're not the side sideshow crowd these paddles are absolutely sick man like this is this is where it's at we'll downshift go down here that is just awesome dude that is freaking sweet you need these if you have a stock M4, you need these. Anything DCT, you need these. Uh, these change the whole driving experience. Now, I've never had an issue with the DCT on this car. I absolutely love the DCT. I absolutely love manual cars as well, but this car is 150% better suited with the DCT than a manual. You're doing yourself a disservice if you buy this S55 engine in an F8X in DCT. Now, maybe I could say uh, something different with the G-Series because the G-Series, as you guys know, um, well, they screwed up in my opinion and they went to that ZF Auto. Not the same, not the same at all. I might buy a manual one of those. Uh, it is quick with the ZF, but it's it's not a dual clutch. It's not true racing, you know, transmission. This is more like a manual uh, that has a freaking activated electronic clutch you can literally i don't know if you guys are aware of this but you can buy a module to add a clutch pedal to the dct and literally clutch kick this thing and drive it like a manual and uh take off those stock electronics and reprogram all that so i don't know if you guys are aware of that but you can literally do that and that is absolutely sick um i think you can even do that and maybe even still run the paddles or whatever i know it does have kind of more of a se sequential shifter. So I would call the DCT more of a uh, dual clutch sequential than an automatic transmission. And this 
it makes it uh, feel that way as well. So, link down in the description to these guys. Freaking sick. Worth every damn penny. Install is super easy. Just do it. Just do it. Later, guys. Wrench on.